the Golan Heights, which is part of Syria, but is occupied by Israel, is under full Israeli control and mm. Israeli settlers live there, I believe. And what... Um, it's and it's funny, I mean, interesting to, for you to talk about the Golan yeah. Heights because missiles was being launched into Israel during the um, um, Six Day War. The Six Day War, 67. but there was there was two. There's six the Yom days. Kippur War. There was yeah. another war in the Sixties. And they sent troops up in there to to wipe that out, and they never gave it back. Yeah, the Golan Heights was captured from Syria in mm. 1967. It's yes. been illegally occupied ever since. Why and is it illegal? Well, you was attacking my country from there. So why is that illegal? But having said that, Israel in itself is illegal. Uh, well, I'm saying it's illegal that Israel control the Golan. Why? Well, under it's conquered territory. Under international law, it's a war crime to transplant your population into War One land. So they're building. <laughs> I don't understand. I, I'm going to go right. See now, I'm for Israel on this. On on which issue? On the issue that. Um, they're not allowed to occupy it. Okay. The, the Golan, the Golan Heights yeah. in particular. The Golan Heights in particular. Okay. Um, missiles was being launched from there, attacking and killing, attacking farms mm -hmm. in the northern part of Israel. If I'm oh, correct. Okay. Well, the the Israelis claim they launched a preemptive strike, and that's what started. No, but they, but they had the missile attacks system. going. They had missile attacks coming from there, constantly into their territory. Okay. If I remember my history no correctly, for, from what I remember, it was troops being massed in the Sinai that made them panic, and essentially, the it may be that the Soviet Union convinced Israel that the Arabs were about to attack, and therefore. Israel launched what they call a preemptive the strike. strike. I don't know. It's not and, how I. Heard okay, it. but you, there, there's. I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. We'll yeah. look, we will look into it. But there yeah. were attacks being launched from the Golan Heights. You're saying that's how I understand okay. it, and based on that is why I'm saying to you, I don't have a problem with them occupying the Golan Heights. Okay. The territory overlooks their land. Well, rockets are being fired from Gaza. How can how about they? occupy that as well they are in Gaza well uh, okay well they have withdrawn the settlers from Gaza the Israelis will complain we left Gaza they took the it's a funny out of Gaza. It, it, it's a funny situation it's a funny it, it's it's a tricky debate for me this mm -hmm. one because when I joined the British Army at 16 my mentality was you shouldn't give back conquered lands okay that was my mentality you shouldn't give back conquered lands. It's but, part of the empire. Sure. And it doesn't matter what country conquers Should you. Should you drive people out of no, land you conquer? No, I don't agree that. Well, there you go. That's where I've got an issue okay. for. You shouldn't drive people out unless they're a threat to your nation, mm -hmm. right? If they, if they comply, they have a right to stay there. And you, as the conqueror, right, yeah, have a, have a humane and uh, an ethical obligation right yeah to look after these people and incorporate them into your society mm -hmm. e.g it's not a double standard they're not your slaves you need to make sure they get medical treatment schooling everything else the same opportunity you're incorporating them as part of the citizenship okay. so they're now israelis do you right. understand or they're now british whatever whatever okay. Okay. you have a right your amb the ambulance. If they turn up and they need ambulance, if they need medical care. Your ambulances don't just run to yours and leave them like they're rubbish. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to go to both. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. You have an you have a right to look after these well, people. You have a moral right, and this is where Britain has let down the Commonwealth in the sense of taking Europeans into Europe. But that's a different conversation. The fact is, with the Gaza Strip now, it's conquered territory. Mm -hmm. I actually have an issue with people keep going on about saying that that should be given back. I have an issue on that sense of it being a conquered territory. Do you understand? Yeah. But us talking about that, the Golan Heights, talking about Gaza, is actually us shaking branches because the fact is, is Israel shouldn't be there in the first place. But then you could argue that because 
the fact that that was chosen and given was again you the Arabs fault because you allowed Britain and America to conquer you in the first place had they have not conquered you in the first place they wouldn't have any right to turn around well, to tell you they'd been conquered by the Turks or they were under the Ottoman Empire call it the, who then the fell yes Islamic that's state. right that's right fell, that's right and yeah. then the cake was carved, carved up, up yes by the imperial powers who yes. defeated the Ottomans but Lawrence of Arabia had already been convincing the Arabs to turn against their fellow Muslim That's Turks right. yeah. and say, but you're Arabs and these are Turks, why are you letting them rule you? And the Arabs rose up and he uh, falsely promised That's right. to them. Apparently he um, almost went insane because of the guilt of telling these people, fight for us and we'll give you your own state. And of course, they never did. They were uh, mandate Palestine and Jordan, the Lebanon and Syria were under the French That's colonies, right. yeah. the sykes Pico. That's how agreement. I remember the story to go, yeah. yeah right. And which takes you up to 1948 when um, we know what happened. And it, but but, but it, it, it goes along the same ethos of what I'm saying. Once you're conquered, you don't have the right, you've lost the right to to complain to a certain degree. I believe that. If you want that back, you need to go and fight for your independence. You have to get up and fight for your independence. Mm -hmm. That's what I believe. My mindset is on that. Okay. All right? Um, to the point now I'm saying Africa needs to go and fight for their independence. I, I, I agree with that 100%. Um, but so, we'll so, go back to Africa in a minute. Yeah. So, so my point is, is um, black nations more so than anybody this applies to. But, but why I'm saying this is because... Um, when I keep hearing, oh, yeah, it sounds like begging to me for some reason. When I hear people saying, oh, Palestine needs to be given back this, this, and that, and the third. Palestine is conquered territory because the neighbouring states that had Palestine attacked mm -hmm. what was worldly, worldly known, internationally known as, as a new state, right? You didn't attack it properly. I mean, in fact... If you study the Six Day War, you'll realize that the fight they put up against them was disgusting. Is that because they're just not as organized? Whatever you want to call it, you're conquered peoples now. Mm -hmm. If I go into a fight and I'm not prepared for it, I wouldn't dare go in the ring without being prepared. I know this is a bit more complex than that, but you prepare for that sort of thing. And you need to be in a position, if you're going to fight, be in a position to take on all the enemies. This state, right, you, you attacked them, you three-pronged attack and failed. Now you're complaining about Palestine. But it's not the Jews really that are to blame for this. It's the neighbouring states that aren't looking after the Palestinian people. Well, they have an obligation to them as Muslims. Mm -hmm. Palestinians have been mistreated by their fellow Arabs, sadly, almost as badly as they have been by the Israelis. You see, when you've got a when you've got an issue like this, you need to do, you need to decipher. In, if you really want to get to the bottom of it and, and to sort it out and, and to stop it happening, you have to then start sit down and write down a contingency plan, right? A, a synopsis of what's going on, and then attacking each issue. Right. And it needs to be part. You know, enemy number one, enemy number two, enemy number three. And you need to understand who your first enemy is. And that needs to be the, pe the person that's causing you most distress at this moment of time. And I'm sorry to tell you, your enemy is your fellow Arab. Because they're not looking after you. When me and a friend uh, and another friend from a Palestinian camp in Beirut, we got arrested in Lebanon. Right. and held for, for a couple of days really and me myself on an irish passport another friend on a british passport even though he's uzbek origin and obviously muslim and the friend from the camp the palestinian they treat they were more rude to him that every time they burst into the cell where they're holding us which one's a palestinian you boy come here like who's the, talking like this the uh, Lebanese so I mean. security for internal security forces because the Palestinians have lived in camps for two or three generations now they're not allowed jo there's certain jobs they can't do in Lebanon in Lebanon in the Muslim Arab 
brother country because they're seen as temporary guests that never left and that are living in camps. They were given one kilometre square in which to build their um, refugee camp and every generation has just built on top of each other. It's gone up and up and up. They can't expand anywhere further and they are a second class citizen. Same in Jordan, even though they're the, the bulk of the population, over 60% of Jordanians now have a Palestinian heritage, but the native original Jordanians look down on them. Syria was one of the few places where the, uh, the Palestinian refugees were treated as good as uh, as Syrians. And now, you give them food, we give now, them now they've got a coup d'etat going on. Mm. Well, it's not a coup d'etat, but you know what I mean? They've got a civil war going on. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's terrible what is happening in Syria, but the Syrian government never turned its back on the Palestinian people. A a any weapons that were fired out of Gaza um, would have been supplied from... Syria. Hamas had their headquarters in Syria, in Damascus. They had to leave and fled to Now you understand Qatar. where this yeah. coup thing... And where was the other country But they managed a successful coup and they managed to... Um, and even though um, Muslims got voted back in as the power, they got a coup d'etat, went on over there. Egypt. Egypt. Okay. And who was the main negotiator for um, the um, Six Days War? Egypt. Nasser, was Nasser? Na, Nasser. Na, na, he's the one who talked Syria into it. Okay. Right? He pulled Syria and pulled Jordan into it and said, let's do a three, three pronged attack we can't lose. Egypt was the main driving force. The, 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 his troops w w were the ones that really tried to press. Yeah. But the other two backed off a little bit yeah. and, and were a bit hesitant. Yeah. And that's what lost him the war. If they had all attacked at the same time, yeah. Israel wouldn't have been able to cope with the war. That's how my understanding of how those two wars went. Yeah, I think Nasser said, um, if, w if we can kill a million Israelis, we'll win. And I've got a million Egyptians that are ready to die mm. for that. And he backed his talk. It's yeah. the other two who didn't back up. Mm. Mm. And so Nasser was a pan-Arabist, pa a pan-Arab yeah. nationalist. So the colonialists have s shifted from backing Islamists or backing Arab nationalists depending on who was winning. So the Ottoman Turks were Muslims and the Ottoman Empire was a united group of Muslims. So Lawrence of Arabia said to the Arabs, you're Arabs, mm. fight together as Arabs to beat the Turks. Mm. And when people like Nasser, people like Yasser Arafat, who was an Arab Muslim Palestinian married to a Christian Palestinian and used to say we'll fly the Palestinian flag from our churches and our mosques when he wanted to unite Christian and Muslim together to fight the occupiers all that during those times when Fatah were the top party in Palestine mm -hmm. Israel was helping Hamas and releasing Hamas prisoners and supporting them and then when Hamas won in 2005 won the election Everyone pulled out and said, no, well, now we don't like Hamas now. Now that they're the main party, we like Fatah. And we can't negotiate with it's, it's, Islamists. It, 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 it's, that's their deal. That's how they work. Yeah. So. That's how they work. It, it, and, and, and it's a concept absorbed by Britain. Yeah. Divide and conquer. Yeah. You know, 100%. so um, that's where that came about. In Ireland, there was the United Irishmen who were Catholics and Protestants mm. united together mm, mm. to defeat England mm. but around the same time the Orange Order emerged and then Britain relaxed the penal laws against Presbyterians who were a type of Protestant mm. so they had some rights given back to them and Catholics still had no rights so they're pushing them against each other and Catholics started to fight Protestants right, and, and vice yeah. versa yep. instead of joining together to fight England but that system never seemed to work here. Divide and conquer. France tried it when they backed um, Henry Tudor. Wow. That, okay, that's going way back. Yeah. And they tried it again when um, 
they were going to back Charles the first. You know what someone told me about Tudor? The name comes from what? Judah. The tribe of Judah, as in they are Israelites. But that's a whole. Other that's story. a whole thing. I can't yeah, even comment whole, on yeah, that. Yeah, I need yeah, to look yeah, into yeah, that. Yeah, yeah.